Hey, Coach, uh, as things stand now, do you expect all 17 players to be on the flight tomorrow? Uh, and the same question about the 18 staff members that fill out the party. Um, the logistics are something we're not going to get into uh, today on this uh, call, but we will get to Orlando safely, and uh, we look forward to getting there safely. Okay. And have you uh, given any more – are you closer to figuring out how you're going to be able to uh, or go about ramping up, gradually ramping up uh, activities as you get there, after you get there? Yeah, uh, Casey Smith and I have talked about um, a plan, and uh, it's not going to be a typical training camp uh, where you jump in on day one and just go full bore. Um, our players have done a great job of – working on their individual conditioning with individual workouts with the coaches um, on the floor on a one-to-one one -one basis and also working with our strength and conditioning team led by Jeremy Holsoppel. So uh, I feel really good about where we're at in terms of overall conditioning right now. Um, but this is a different situation. It's a different time. It's a different set of circumstances. And uh, – you know, like so many other things involved in this endeavor, there, there's going to be a level of fluidity as we move forward. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Rick. Um, next, we're coming to Callie. I don't see Callie on the screen. Oh, no. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you, Callie? Good. Thanks. My question is kind of similar to Brad, but I'm curious, what kind of clarity has this past week of mandatory workouts provided, and what are the variables you might still be evaluating on the fly? Uh, repeat that, please. I didn't hear it that well. Yeah, I was saying, what kind of clarity has this past week of mandatory workouts provided? And then on the flip side, what sort of variables are you still evaluating on the fly? Um, you know, I've been in the gym too two weeks as of tomorrow. Uh, that was when I was allowed in. Now I was allowed in um, Tuesday the 23rd for testing, but there were no workouts that day. So ever since I've been in, which has been 13 days, um, you know, I've gotten to watch every day. Um, and as I mentioned a moment ago, um, the workouts have been, have been constantly, gradually ramping up. And this is really the players – uh, ramping it up on their own. I mean, these are voluntary, they have been voluntary workouts up until this week. Um, and I just see the overall intensity level um, increasing as we're going along. Um, and again, I, I just, you know, I feel good about where we're at um, this particular moment. Uh, as we know, there's, uh, there's a lot of delicacy with this situation. Uh, <laughs> we're going to stay very humble about where we are and, uh, you know, and keep and keep moving forward. You know, with with a really good attitude and and uh, and, a, and a consistent approach. Thank you. Great, thank you. Next is um, Tim Reynolds from the AP. Hi, Coach. Good to see you. Hey, um, Rick. I've been on a lot of calls around the league the last week or so, and a lot of coaches have raved about what Brian Stevenson has meant to you guys. Um, what are some of the takeaways that you've had from from your talks with him as you prepare for whatever the platform and whatever the messaging will be down at Disney? Well, you know, we formed uh, when we got together on May 30th uh, as a as a body of head coaches, all 30 of us. Uh, you know, we decided to appoint uh, uh, Lloyd Pierce as the lead for the uh, NBA committee on. Uh, racial injustice and reform. And, and then that committee took the ball and did a lot of, uh, did a lot of homework, did a lot of research uh, over a three week period. Um, one of the things that uh, the group and Lloyd came up with was uh, the, the concept that we needed to try to connect with Brian Stevenson at the Equal Justice Initiative um, to see if he would be willing to first talk to us um, and then secondly, possibly partner with us. So we got him on a Zoom call early on um, as the committee was formed. 
it was supposed to be a 30 minute call uh, and turned out to be uh, an hour and 40 minutes of just listening to him, to him talk about the history of all different assets of things that have gone on with racial injustice and systemic oppression. Um, it was mesmerizing. Um, it was an education in itself. Um, each of us, you know, got to ask one question, uh, or I think each of us did ask one question to Brian and, and his response, you know, was just, uh, it, it was motivating. It was, uh, you know, it was just, uh, you can just tell that this guy is uh, very, very special. And so uh, after that call and some more dialogue with him, he agreed to partner with us. Um, so we have since it's become, our, the name of our initiative now is NBA Coaches um, for Racial Justice, because um, it's always good to be for something. And Brian has agreed to join us. Uh, one of the things we're gonna be doing in Orlando is using the uh, Equal Justice Initiative calendar. Every day of the year on the calendar is the anniversary um, of some year, some year in history of some um, incident or situation where there was you know, a, a severe example of racial injustice. And part of the thing that he stressed to us as coaches, you know, we are teachers. Um, the most important thing we can do is keep the conversation going and use our platform to educate people. Um, because, you know, truth and reconciliation and, and admitting that so many of these horrible things happened, you know, over the last 400 plus years is a lot of what the healing and moving forward in, in a progressive uh, in positive way is all about. So um, we're thrilled that Brian is joining us. He was on the NBA town hall um, call Thursday and he was mesmerizing again. You know, he was just great. He, him along with Van Jones, um, Sherilyn Eiffel and, and, and many others. That was another great, great experience. So the whole hope is that uh, Brian will join some of our coaches on some town hall type broadcasting situations, maybe with NBA TV, TNT, or ESPN, to talk further about this. Um, you know, social, social justice um, and social injustice is gonna be a big part of the, the entire Orlando experience. Black Lives Matter, as I understand it, will be on the court. Um, and so, you know, we're just very proud and uh, you know, and, and, and really privileged that, that he's, he's, he's planned to join us. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that question, too. Thank you. Um, Eddie, I'm unmuting you now. Howdy, Rick. Uh, basketball questions seem kind of pale in comparison to after that, but uh, uh, I'm wondering uh, how much – how much importance you uh, are placing on guys like JJ and Hardaway and Seth and some others that uh, have been in a playoff situation before and what kind of wisdom you think they can impart to uh, your guys that have, uh, have not been there? Well, they're going to be extremely important. And, you know, we are a young team um, that's gained a pretty significant amount of experience the last couple of years. Um, this year in particular has been important because KP has been in the mix. Um, but you ask a great question. Um, JJ Beret, I don't know how many playoff games he's been involved in, but it's an awful lot. Um, as you mentioned, Hardaway's been in them. Seth has been in them. Um, I think we have some other players that have been in them. You know, Luca and KP have been involved in a lot of um, European an international competition that's very significant. So it's not like they haven't been through some high level situations, um, but this is gonna be really important. Um, you know, the, the, the guys, and particularly JJ, who is one of the leaders of our team in the locker room um, and on the floor, you know, he, he, can, he can paint the picture of, you know, what we're getting ourselves into, because we will be in the playoffs, you know, eight games into this. 
Um, and as we uh, as we approach training camp and uh, the scrimmages, you know, and and the eight game um, schedule, you know, we're we're going to be thinking about being aggressive, playing our game, and and trying to move up in the standings if we can. One one more thing, if I could. Uh, what they say it's the same for everybody, but do you think these this long break has benefited any? Anybody in particular, I mean, any team or any style of team more than another, maybe the older teams got a better chance to rest or whatever? I've heard arguments both ways. You know, you hear that the, the more veteran teams uh, will be fresh. You know, you hear that the younger teams are um, more equipped because they'll bounce back quicker and they'll get in shape quicker and stuff like that. You know, you, could, you can go either way with the discussion about that. Um, I just think that whatever kind of team you have, you've got to approach it that this is a great situation and a great opportunity. Um, this is an extraordinary endeavor. I mean, no one has ever, um, you know, done what we're going to do and attempt to do as, as a league in Orlando. Um, and so we really look forward to it. It's, it's, it, it truly is historic. All right, thanks. Our next question is from Pedro Silva with Univision. Hello, Coach. How you doing? Good. Coach, I'm not sure if you saw the news. Yesterday, MLS decided to pull FC Dallas out of their tournament uh, after 11 members of the team tested positive for COVID-19. I wanted to know if the NBA has addressed in a hypothetical situation if something similar were to happen as far as a plan if multiple players were to test, what would be the, the plan laid out for you guys? Knock on wood, of course, if that were to happen. Well, I, I'm sure that all these scenarios have been talked about and have been um, covered in, in the protocols. Um, you know, I, look, we've been through a lot of things in terms of being educated for this. Um, and the, the most important thing is to do whatever you can do to stay safe, um, to, to stay socially distanced, um, to try to avoid the kind of situation that happened to Jesse Dallas. Um, you know, the virus is, is, you know, unpredictable on many levels, but the one thing that's very predictable is, you know, the level of contagiousness that is involved with it. Um, and the NBA has done, done a really, really, really great job of communicating um, the safety protocols. You know, everything from, you know, the, the 36 to 48 hour quarantine when we get in there. Um, we've just been tested three days in a row. Um, there's, a, there's a testing protocol that is, um, it's got to be second to none. And, uh, and look, we just got to all keep our eye on the ball. Um, you know, do, do what's you know, on a day-to-day -day basis is being asked of us to do in terms of safety and, and proceed like that and, and, and hope that this type of situation does not happen again. And just to follow up really quick on that, uh, if the players or if your players were to ask to watch a soccer match while they're there in Orlando, I'm not sure if the schedules are available, of course, but if, if they were, is that a possibility if, let's say, one of your players would like to see a soccer match as well over there in Orlando? I'm not certain about that. I don't I don't know logistically where where they're located um, in relation to us. I don't know if they're um, part of our protected area or not. So I, I would have to kind of plead ignorance on that. Um, you know, in, in in today's day and age, um, if you have a telephone, you could probably you could probably watch any soccer, basketball, football, baseball. A game or match that you want to that you want to watch. Um, so I really do not have the answer to that question. I understand. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Um, next up is Todd. Hey, we're good. To, great to see you. Um, a couple questions, if I may ask. Uh, one, do you anticipate uh, any kind of schematic changes? Even though obviously you guys were. Um, on a historic pace offensively, but just from the layoff and then also losing a guy like Willie Cauley-Stein and Dwight Powell, who are two two of the elite role players, um, 
you know, do you, do you anticipate having to make schematic changes because of that? Well, we'll evaluate that. I, I don't see anything um, big in terms of schematic changes. Um, but I do think we, we need to get better in a couple of areas. You know, I think defensively, we have a chance to really improve. Um, that, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's an area where, you know, we were in the 20s in defense beginning of the year. Now we're, you know, around 14 or 15, I think. And, you know, the top 10 is a, is a goal of ours. And so, so uh, you know, we would like to get there. Um, the other thing is, is free throw shooting, you know. Um, and during this period, our guys have done uh, an enormous amount of work on just uh, concentrating um, you know, and, and getting better and, and free throw shooting is a, uh, you know, it's a different kind of endeavor. It's, there's not a whole lot of creativity to it. It's just, it's, it's rote kind of repetition and it's, it's getting, it's getting a routine that you trust and just repeating it and repeating it, and repeating it, and then getting in situations where you can simulate and, and, um, and work on simulating game situations. So, um, those are two areas where, you know, I don't know schematically that there'll be big changes, um, but we feel like there are areas of upside for us. And then just uh, just the other thing, earlier today, Mike D'Antoni said that he was going to be wearing a mask on the bench. And, and I was curious if one, you were going to be able, you were going to do that as well. And then two, if so, what kind of challenge that presents uh, to have that on during the game? Well, you know, I, I don't um, – what I can tell you is I believe that the plan going into this was front of the bench coaches would have the option of, of not wearing masks. Um, that is not to say that, that some coaches on the front of the bench, um, you know, won't decide to wear them. And uh, the fact that Mike's deciding to wear it, you know, to my knowledge is, is a personal choice. Um, who knows? I, I may decide to wear one too, uh, you know, uh, but that is, that is something that, that um, I haven't uh, had a direct conversation with the league about yet. And, uh, you know, as we move forward, I, th I think you're going to see, see a lot of sort of, you know, give and take on things. Um, you know, the level of fluidity with this, with this situation and this endeavor is, is, you know, it's, um, ongoing. I mean, everything day to day is you're kind of, you're kind of adapting, reacting and, 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 and doing what's best based on circumstances. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I respect Mike that. Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. Appreciate you. Okay, we've got three questions left. Um, the next one will be from Dwayne. Hey, Rick, how you doing today? Hey, Dwayne. Uh, what concerns do you have going to the state of Florida, which has the highest uh, coronavirus cases in the entire United States? And what are some of the challenges, not only the Mavericks, but the other 21 teams will face as they try to stay safe uh, during this coronavirus pandemic? Well, the numbers are spiking in a lot of places, um, Texas included. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're aware of what's going on um, down in Florida. And in our Zoom call uh, yesterday with the league, um, with all the head coaches and assistant coaches, um, it was brought up, it was talked about. Uh, it just, more than anything else, it just, brings in an obvious extra level of carefulness that you have to bring um, and, and respect that you have to bring to the situation. Um, you know, we'll all be wearing masks on the plane, to my knowledge. Um, we'll be wearing masks on the bus to the hotel. Um, I can tell you this, every, every place we go, every, every room we go in, every situation we're in, uh, everything is going to be sanitized, and then once we leave, it'll be re-sanitized. I mean, everything from from practice floors to meeting rooms to um, any any kind of situation where where players or coaches are going to be. And so, um, 
even though the cases are high in Florida, uh, our protected area, you know, should be one of the safest places to be. Um, if you, you know, if you factor in the, the amount of testing and the amount of care that's gone into the planning. So, you know, we have a lot of faith in that. Um, and as we move forward, you know, once again, we, we move into this with a, with a high degree of respect for the virus, um, high degree of, of humility that, you know, um, every day we, we've got to really pay attention to detail um, to as much as possible keep our, ourselves and our, and our teams out of harm's way. Uh, one other question. Will you guys work out tomorrow and then leave or just go straight to the airport and fly out there? Uh, we will not work out tomorrow. Our, uh, our flight will be in the morning to Orlando. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Okay. Next up, Tim McMahon. Hey, Rick. Um, Luke was pretty beat up when the season was suspended, and I know he was able to put in a lot of work uh, when he was back home in Slovenia. How do you think he's been able to benefit from a health and conditioning standpoint from this long break? Yeah, you know, um, Luca had had a, uh, an ankle issue, um, and he, you know his style of play is a physical style of play offensively, and he hits the floor a lot. And so, you know, he was banged up as as a lot of guys were. You know, Dorian Finney-Smith and Seth Curry didn't play. Um, the game, the final game before the hiatus against Denver, Seth had an ankle. Um, Dorian, you know, had a, had the hip flexor that had been bothering him. Um, and of course, you know, we're not even mentioning Powell and Brunson. And and uh, and so, the answer is that these guys have had a chance to heal up. Um, and the thing I like about the last seven or eight weeks, it's been a it's been a gradual ramp up. Um, you know, back into, you know, what, it, what, what is sort of the road to NBA conditioning. And, and once again, I, you know, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Mark yesterday, you know, about, about um, everything that, that's been going on here. And, uh, you know, our support staff, Casey Smith, Dion Calhoun, Jeremy Holzhoff, these guys just done a phenomenal job of keeping things clean and safe to this point. Um, and creating an environment where our guys, you know, feel a real positivity when they walk in the gym, even, even though the world is going through, you know, this uh, unprecedented challenge. And so, uh, bottom line, um, you know, Luca feels good. He's working extremely hard. Um, and... I know he's looking forward to playing. I, the, the, the thing that I've gotten from this, you know, being in the gym the last 13 day, days, our guys are excited about getting back on the floor and playing together and competing together. And I think that's a really, really important thing headed to Orlando. Awesome. Thank you. And our final question is from Isaac Harris, Mavs.com. Hey, Rick. Rick, I appreciate this for us. A uh, question about KP and his weight. He mentioned on Friday that maybe coming out of rehab that he possibly, uh, maybe it was a mistake putting on as much weight as he did during his rehab process. Do you feel that he's at an ideal weight now? And how hard is it for a player to find their ideal weight to play at? Well, interesting. Um, what I can tell you is that you know, the fact that he's played 50 plus games with us, um, you know, the, the, the additional weight that he put on when, you know, over the 18 or 19 month period, you know, some of that just, just gradually kind of tapers away. And so uh, right now I can tell you that he looks great. Um, I have not had a direct conversation with him about his weight or, or how he's feeling. I, I, so I can't speak to it. Um, in, in, in a concise way, but uh, right now I love the way that he's moving. Um, you know, they've ramped up, you know, drill work and done some stuff, with, you know, that are pretty much simulating uh, live situations and, um, and he's moving great and he's been very aggressive in his workouts, both on the floor, um, in the weight room and relative to just to straight conditioning. Thank you. Thank you.